KY3 and KSPR News starts with breaking news. For me, it was kind of like, it's kind of like a fight or flight thing. It, it's just another experience. It's out of this world. I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just, I don't know. Tragedy on Table Rock Lake. 11 dead after a duck boat got caught in severe storms. We have a live report on the investigation coming up. We will also be talking about how people across the Ozarks will be cleaning up today as high winds and thunderstorms left hundreds with storm damage and thousands without power. Our top story, 11 dead, two in critical condition after a duck boat capsized on Table Rock Lake. This is video from someone who saw it happen. This is the Branson Bell where this person's getting the video, watching the duck boat struggling in those high waves and high winds. And the Stone County Sheriff and the KY3 storm team say the high winds were at least partly to blame for this accident. This is a picture of the radar starting at 6.30 p.m. last night. You can see the storm warm moving through. A thunderstorm warning went into effect at 6.32. Our meteorologists say the wind was on the front end of this storm. You can see it right there hitting Branson. And then it charged across Table Rock Lake right at 7 o'clock. That's when the accident happened. Lexi Spivak is live at Table Rock Lake where search crews are gonna be back to work pretty soon. Lexi, what's going on there right now? Justin, right now we haven't seen any search crew boats really take to Table Rock Lake yet. Again, this morning we do know that they are searching for six missing people still. We also know that 11 are dead this morning after this terrible boating incident of those 11. We do know that children are included in that number. Now, there were 31 total passengers on this Ride the Duck boat, and two of those were crew members. Now, this is when this happened at 7 o'clock last night. We also know there are 14 survivors. Cox Health here in Branson has seven patients as of last night, two in critical condition. The Missouri State Highway Patrol dive team will take over water recovery today for those six remaining missing people. And the Western Taney County Fire Dive Team worked up until 1130 last night searching Table Rock Lake. Now we also know that the NTSB GO team is on their way to help in this investigation. And this has been a teamwork effort here really with multiple agencies across this part of the state. The Stone County Sheriff says there were life jackets on board, but as to whether or not people on this boat were wearing them is still unanswered. Now, the sheriff is also asking anyone who took video of the event to come forward. If you have video of this incident, please contact our Stone County Sheriff's Office or send the video to our Stone County Sheriff's Office Facebook page. We would really appreciate that. Again, back out here in Branson on Table Rock Lake this morning. Crews are still searching for six missing people. Also want to note that the Branson City Hall is open for anyone today, family and friends who are searching for loved ones. There's also a phone number that you can call that is on the bottom of your screen right now. The number is 417-337-8515. Again, that is for family and friends who maybe knew someone on this boat. Also want to mention that moving forward today at 9 o'clock this morning, Morning. We are expecting a news conference where we hope a lot of our questions will get answered, including the big one on many people's mind, which is why was this boat on the water 30 minutes after this weather warning was issued? We also hope to find out the identities of these 11 people. And lastly, uh, I know I speak for all of us that our thoughts and prayers are with these uh, victims, families and their friends, and also with the survivors. It's going to be a long road to recovery uh, after this traumatic event. Justin Maria, back to you. Lexi, thank you. And political leaders across the state are sending out their condolences this morning. Governor Mike Parson posted on Facebook saying, quote, very sad to hear about this horrible incident. Prayers for all those involved and the first responders who are assisting, end quote. We're going to be on this story all day, so stick with us on air, online, and on our mobile apps for the latest updates. Meanwhile, a lot of damage all around the Ozarks this morning after those storms. Wow. These are some pictures that viewers shared with us. Look at this huge tree uprooted here. Lots of big branches down. Our Jasmine Dell is live in Springfield now, getting a look at some of that damage. What can you tell us? Where are you, Jasmine? Maria and Justin, I'm actually in the center part of town, right off Sunshine. Now, I do want to give you a look here behind me. Also, another 
branch down. You know, heavy storms ripped through the Ozarks last night. And last night, there was actually 20,000 people here in Springfield without power. Now, I just got an update minutes ago with City Utilities, and they told me that 2,200 people are still without power this morning. Now, the strong line of storms also caused heavy damage, not only here in Springfield, but across the Ozarks, and people in Ash Grove lost power. And we're out surveying the damage after the powerful storm took out trees and electric lines. Despite the damage, the storm left behind. Ash Grove's mayor appreciates the community coming together. My police force, our fire department, and especially our, our city crew, they've already got barricades up. We have multiple down power lines, trees. Um, you can probably hear in the background some saws going right now. So my you know, hats, hats off to my guys for being proactive with this, and we're trying to minimize uh, what's going on. So, you know, obviously the power company has to come back out and put hook that back up. Now here in Springfield, crews have worked throughout the night and more crews are coming in at 8 a.m. to work in the daylight hours and that will last throughout the day. Reporting in Springfield, I'm Jasmine Dell. Jasmine, thank you. Well, as you said, CU requested additional line and tree crews. Also asking for help from other utility companies. They're going to get some crews from Kansas City this morning, but there is storm damage all over and most of those crews are already busy. City Utilities reporting again more than 2,000 outages. So here's the latest outage map. We no longer have that red area, so they're making some progress. Kansas Power and Light sending crews to help work on those lines. So here you go. Here's one area, more than 600, 668. And this is uh, Northwest Springfield. And then right down here is another. You see the mention of Fast Night. This is Grand and Fort. This area here, more than 600 out. And then near the cemetery, more than 500 out there. So that's the breakdown on the city utilities outage map. In Barrie and Taney counties, White uh, River Valley Electric. Let me update this map quickly, make sure I'm giving you the latest information here. Showing in well, just a few. Then Now, this doesn't look very bad right now. We've seen this change all morning. Just a handful right now, but they do this in phases. So what happens is they shut down an area, work on power, and then restore it temporarily. So we'll keep you updated on that throughout the morning. And one last check here on Liberty Utilities. Currently more than, or about 400 customers right now. Dallas County, the majority of those outages. Justin. Maria, thank you. Despite the deadly storms last night, Brandon says the heat is coming back today and back in a big way. Brandon, are these temperatures gonna be dangerous? Well, I think they will be, uh, particularly south of Springfield. Not like it won't be hot here, it's just that the combination of heat and humidity, a little more intense to the south, where I think the heat index could get really close to 110 degrees today. That's really getting kind of dangerous, especially if you're not uh, paying attention to what your body's telling you. you can go outside for a couple hours, not drink enough, and boy, you can get in a world of hurt. So in any case, uh, south of Springfield, all of northern Arkansas in on that advisory. Temps are actually a little cooler for some of you this morning because we've had some rain around. Still have a few storms out there this morning. In fact, uh, some 60s in spots, but it's 78 in Rogers and Springfield at 73. So I think we're going to see a few storms around this morning. We'll clear that out. We'll heat up 81 at 9 o'clock, 89 by 11, and into the 90s by around lunchtime. We'll go higher than that and more storms could fire up this afternoon and evening those could be severe so plenty to talk about with that forecast in a few minutes thanks brandon we're expecting today to be the hottest of the year and that's especially dangerous for seniors and children daphne greenlee is the coordinator for safe kids springfield she says every nine days a child is left in a hot car in the u.s so far this year 24 kids have died that way three of the cases happened in missouri we know that a child's body starts to shut down after 107 degrees internally. So it's really important, you know, don't leave them in the car for any amount of time. Even if the windows are down, you know, take them out of the car every time. One thing parents can do, it's easy, is to put your phone, your purse in the back seat, something you need to get. That way you have to go back there before leaving your car and locking it. A man from Ava is dead after a crash south of that town. The Ohio Patrol says Elijah Gonzalez's utility vehicle ran off Highway 5 and flipped last night. Gonzalez was 24. A Greene County deputy is in the hospital after a chase through North Springfield last night before 6 o'clock. The sheriff's office says a man driving a stolen SUV backed into a patrol car when the deputy tried to stop it. Deputies say after a chase, the SUV rammed another patrol car near the fairgrounds. The driver then jumped out and tried to run away, but he was arrested. A passenger also arrested. The deputy is not seriously 
hurt. Police say an Oklahoma family is under arrest for allowing their teen son to starve and live in a barn. Officers found a 15-year-old boy severely malnourished with broken bones and other signs of abuse. Meanwhile, the parents, adult stepbrothers, and a four-year-old girl lived in a home on the property, and they appeared to be healthy. The boy's father, his wife, and stepsons are all under arrest now for child neglect. The teen weighed only 80 pounds. Neighbors thought the teen was actually only around eight years old. The prosecutor also says he was shot. He'd been shot by his dad with a shotgun, with a bird shot, and x-rays revealed that he did have shotgun pellets still lodged. He is still in the hospital, but recovering this morning. He was pulled out of school two years ago, and investigators believe that's when the abuse started. People in Iowa are cleaning up after this, a tornado outbreak. Incredible video. We're told dozens, dozens of possible tornadoes came from the same storm system. In Pella, a twister hit the campus of Vermeer, a farm equipment plant, packed with people for the company's anniversary celebration. North of what you're seeing right here, homes in ruins, no one got seriously hurt. Yeah, for the number of tornadoes being reported up there, that's pretty amazing. Uh, almost 30, actually 32. They'll combine those probably with surveys. In any case, severe weather possibility here again today. And the heat's kind of a no-brainer. It will be worse for some than others. I'll show you who's got the advisory and at least a little bit of relief coming up for the weekend. All that up next.